بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So brothers, uh, we reached uh, this part or this section in the book, The Three Fundamental Principles, by the, uh, the explanation of uh, Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan, uh, Hafizullah. And we reached, uh, we were discussing, the Sheikh was discussing the types of worship. Uh, we went through a few and then we stopped here at uh, Ar-Ragba, Wal-Rahba, Wal-Khushu. So inshallah, we'll continue from where we left off. So the Shaykh he says Al-Ragbatu Wal-Rahbatu Wal-Khushu'u Wa-Dalilu Kullin Wa-Dalilu Al-Ragbati Wal-Rahbati Wal-Khushu'i Qawluhu Ta'ala Innahum Kanu Yusari'una Fil Khayrati Wa Yad'oonana Ragban Wa Rahba Wa Kanu Lana Khashi'een and that's a verse from Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 90. So uh, the, this section starts off with the title, Ar-Ragba wa Rahba wa Khushu. And, and all these are forms of uh, fear, the types of fear. And some of uh, these, uh, or each type of fear is more specific than the other. And the Shaykh will explain, inshallah. Uh, and I'll translate that uh, uh, with the, in, in this lesson, inshallah. And then the evidence of what we just mentioned here with regards to these types of fear and lowering yourself and humbling yourself is the ayah that we just read from Surah Al-Anbiya. And if we go to Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 90, and have a look at the meaning of this verse, then it says, So we answered his call, and we bestowed upon him Yahya John, and cured his wife to bear a child for him. Verily, they used to hasten on to good deeds, and they used to call on us with the hope and fear, and used to humble themselves before us. So that's the whole ayah that we've just uh, uh, read the meaning of. So then the shaykh continues and he says, Ar-Ragba. He says the word Ar-Ragba, he says, Hiya talabu shay al-Mahmood. So Ar-Ragba is um, um, at, uh, when somebody requests or seeks something uh, that's praiseworthy. So just going back to the title, there's Ar-Ragba, which is what the sheikhs mentioned here, and then there's Ar-Rahba wal-Khushu, which are types of fear and humbling yourself. So Ar-Ragba, as the sheikh mentions here, he says it is seeking a thing, uh, seeking a praiseworthy thing or a praiseworthy outcome. Okay, Ar-Ragba. And then the sheikh, he continues and he says, Ar-Rahba, he says here, Al-Khawf min al-Shay al-Marhub qala ta'ala wa iyaya farhabun. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 40. وَهِيَ نَوْمٌ مِّنُ الْخَوْفِ الرَّحْبَ وَالْخَوْفِ بِمَعْنَ وَاحِدٍ So then the Shaykh, he says, what's Rahba then? He says, Ar-Rahba to, he says, Ar-Rahba, it is uh, fearing or having fear from a thing that is to be feared. Uh, that will go into more detail, the Shaykh will go into more detail later. And he says, he, he mentions an ayah from the Quran or part of an ayah, وَإِيَا يَا فَرْحَبُونَ Where Allah says, and uh, fear me. Yeah, so fear me and fear me. Uh, from Surah Al-Baqarah verse 40. And then the Shaykh, he says, it's a type of fear. And he says, Ar-Rahba. So he says, the word Ar-Rahba and the word Al-Khawf, they mean, they carry the same meaning. They're the same. So Al-Khawf is fear and so is Ar-Rahba is fear as well. Yeah. Then the Shaykh moves on to the third word that was mentioned in the title and he says, Al-Khushu. And he says, Naw'un min at لِلَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ وَالْخُضُوءِ وَظُلِّ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَهُوَ مِنْ عَذَمْ مَقَامَاتِ الْإِبَادَةِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّهُمُ الْضَمِيرِ فَإِنَّهُمْ Okay, so we'll just stop there for a second. Because the Shaykh is going um, to start breaking down uh, the verse that we mentioned at the start, uh, the Quranic verse that we mentioned at the start uh, and explaining away, inshallah. So he says, الْخُشُوءِ الْخُشُوءِ 
is it says it's a it's a type of um lowering your uh, lowering yourself and uh, humbling yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what khushu is so lowering yourself so like as when you hear the khushu in the salah when you're praying then you know you lower yourself you humble yourself you lower yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what the sheikh has mentioned here and he says it's from the is from the greatest stations of ibadah that if you can reach if you can be in this state truly in this state when you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala then here in the that's from the most magnificent stations of worship that you can be in that situation then the shaykh continues and he says qawlu ta'ala innahum adhamir yarji lil anbiya li anna surat al anbiya qad dhakara Allah wa qassas al anbiya fiha ثم قال إنهم كانوا يصارعون في الخيرات ويدعوننا رغبا ورهبا وكانوا لنا خاشين فقوله تعالى يصارعون في الخيرات أي يتسابقون إليها ويبادرون إليها هذه صفة الأنبياء عليهم الصلاة والسلام لا يتكاسلون ولا يتعاجزون وإنما يصارعون إلى فعل الخيرات ويتسابقون إليها so then the shaykh he says is you know, just let's just go back. He mentions innahum, and we're referring to this ayah here at the top, if you can see, which we um, went through. We'll go through it again in a second. So innahum, the Shaykh says that this is, it's um, it's referring to them. In Arabic, it means indeed them. And it's referring to the prophets, al Because the Shaykh says that uh, this surah is called Surah al and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned there the stories about of the prophets within that surah. And he said, Innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrati wa yadu'unana raghban wa rahaba wa kanu lana khashi'een. And if you go back to the meaning, uh, to that ayah, and if you just go to that particular section of the ayah, verily they used to hasten on to do good deeds and they used to call on us with hope and fear and used to humble themselves before us. So then the Shaykh, he mentioned, he says, so when, uh, um, when the ayahs mentioned regarding Yusari Una Fil Khairat, that they compete and they hasten to do good deeds and they compete in doing good deeds, all that which is good. Then basically they're competing in that which we're doing good and they're running towards that, they're hastening themselves towards it, they're not delaying it. That if there's an opportunity to do good, they're there and they're doing it, they're doing that goodness, whatever it is. And the Shaykh says that this is a this is one of the attributes of the of the uh, prophets alayhim salatu was salam they don't they don't you know lazy and shy away you know they, they're not lazy and they don't and then and they're not just you know slow to do um these good deeds uh, and in fact rather they are competing and they are running towards doing those good deeds and that's from their characteristics and they compete in doing good so then the Sheikh moves on and he says, um, So this part of the ayah, yeah, and if you just go back and we read that, they used to hasten on to good deeds and they used to call on us with hope and fear. So they used to, they called on us with hope. So hope here, ragab, hope. You used to call us hope. What in 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 seeking uh, that reward that is with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and tasting that reward and get, gaining that reward and obtaining that what is sought. Then the Sheikh says, "Qawluhu Taala wa rahaba." So they so if you go back to the ayah, verily they used to hasten on to do good deeds and they used to call us with hope. That's ragaba and fear. That's rahaba. So then the Shaykh says, i.e. in fear from us, you know, being fearful of us and calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, um, and that is, uh, it, it, it just mentions here, فَيَدْعُونَ اللَّهَ أَنْ يَرْحَمَهُمْ So they, they, they ask Allah that he has mercy upon them in fear of Allah. They ask for mercy and that they ask for that he does not punish them. And that he doesn't hold them accountable, so he forgives them and asking for mercy. 
So then the Sheikh says, "For whom you tmauna fi rahmatillahi wa yakhafuna min adabihi." So then they, so then putting this together, the Sheikh says that they, they seek Allah's mercy and they fear Allah's punishment. And then the Sheikh says, "As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He said, 'Ulaika aladina yadguna yabtaguna ila Rabbihim wal wasila ta'ayhum akrab wa yarjuna rahmata wa yakhafuna adaba." And then the Sheikh says, "For whom يدعون الله خوفا منه ويدعون عيدا طمعا فيما عنده يدعون الله أن يقدر لهم الخير ويدفع عنهم الشر وكانوا لنا خاشين." So let's just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh mentions a different evidence that's linked to what we're talking about here from Surah Al Isra, verse fifty-seven. And if you go there and read that, the meaning of which is those whom they call upon. Like Isa, Jesus, son of Maryam, Uzair, the angels, etc., desire for themselves means of access to their Lord Allah, as to which of them should be the nearest. And they, Isa and Uzair, angels, etc., hope for His mercy and fear His torment. Verily, the torment of your Lord is something to be afraid of. So then, that evidence is also mentioned here. And so the Sheikh says, so they call upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in a state of fear, a fear of Him. They also call upon Him, uh, seeking uh, um, and wanting to obtain His mercy, for example, um, or that which is with Him of reward, etc., and that He uh, bestows upon them and uh, destines for them al khair, all that which is good. And to push away, away from them all that which is evil. And then the Sheikh mentions the last part of the ayah that the main theme of this subject, which you read earlier on uh, on the other page, and he, he mentions the last part of this ayah, and he says, "Wakanu lana khashiin," which is going back to the ayah that we read from Surah Al Anbiya, and they are in a state, in, and they are towards in a state of fear. Uh, sorry, uh, humbleness. So, in a state of humbleness, i.e., you know, lowering themselves, making themselves low, and making themselves small in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, humbleness, you, you know, and humiliating, uh, uh, humbling themselves. Sorry, and so the Sheikh mentions that, and and then the Sheikh says, so with all these these attributes, these three attributes, um, he says that they are gathered, or. Are together, I mean, in terms of al-raghba wa rahba wa khushu, which is this uh, hope and fear and hum- humbling oneself. Then these three attributes, uh, he says, these are the attributes of the prophets of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he also mentions, he says that these are the types. He says, "Wahadi al anwa al thalata min anwa li bad al ilaz wajal." And he says, "These uh, types, these three types, or these three words that we've mentioned here, and uh, are types of worship, and worshiping Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." So then the Sheikh continues, and he says, "Wa fiha radun al sufiya al adina yaqulun nahnu la naabud Allah raghbatan." في ثوابه ولا خوفا من يقابه وإنما نعبده محبة له فقط هذا كلام باطل لأن الأنبياء يدعون الله رغبا ورحبا وهم أكمل الخلق. so uh, pay attention to this because it's an important point. the sheikh then he says and within what the sheikh has mentioned so far he says and in it is a refutation. Of the Sufiya, the Sufis, who they say we we don't worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in a state of hope of His mercy, in a state of hope of obtaining His mercy, and nor do we worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in a state of fear from His uh, punishment. Well, ra- rather, we worship we worship Him. Uh, Uh, in a state of uh, love only, so love only, and the Sheikh says that this speech from the Sufis, and this is what they believe. This is the central tenets of their deen, of their way, is that he says that this speech is a uh, false. He said because the prophets, they called upon 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of hope, in a state of fear. Um, and, and they are the most complete of the creation. That the, prophet, uh, the prophets and messengers are from the most complete of, of, the, uh, of the creation. And our Prophet wasallam is the most complete from them. Of the creation. So so we take that example when we put that together, we see that obviously where they have gone wrong, the Sufi or these people who carry the, those kinds of beliefs. Um, and yeah, sorry, just made a, a little error there. Uh, Ragba, as in desiring the reward and hoping for that reward and desiring it, as in hoping to desire, uh, hoping and desiring uh, for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair, uh, Wasim. So uh, then we continue, and the Shaykh he says al khashya and so if you look at the top of the page, he says al khashya tu wa daliluha, so humbling oneself or lowering oneself, and its evidence um, comes here, and the, the Shaykh says, and the evidence of that is where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned fala taqshohum, don't fear them, right? So don't humble yourself, down lower yourself, and fear, fear them. So uh, I'll just go back a second. Khashya. So we're moving on to a different word here. Just give me one second. So khashya. So we've mentioned aragba, warahba, wal khushu. So let's just to clear the confusion up. Aragba is hoping and desiring in the reward of Allah's reward. I mean, aragba. Arahba is fear, and al khushu is lowering yourself uh, in 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 front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, that's the, those three words. And that's what they mean. And the Sheikh explained it. Alhamdulillah. And then now we move on to al khashya and that's a different uh, uh, word now, and it has a different meaning, and it's a type of worship. So the Shaykh says al khashya and its evidence, al khashya means fear. And he says the evidence here is from the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ From Surah Al-Baqarah verse 150, meaning that don't fear them. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, Al Khashya tu no min al Khauf. Wahi a Khasu min al Khauf waqil al Khashya Khauf Yeshubuhu ta'adim kala ta'ala fala takshawhum amrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi khashyati wahda. So then uh, the Shaykh he mentioned he says al Khashya that the word the word al Khashya it's it's a type of fear and he says that it is uh, it, he says that it's most it's a specific type of of fear. And he says it is said as well that al khashya is it is a it's a type of it's a it's a type of fear that brings about the f- feeling like of of awe as well, and and there's it, it carries that magnificence with it that puts you in a state of awe. And then uh, uh, the sheikh mentioned he says Qala ta'ala fala and so that ayah mentions and don't fear them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't fear them. And Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us by fearing him, saying, don't fear them, but fear me alone. So then the shaykh continues and he says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى فِي الْآيَةِ فَلَا تَغْشَوْهُمْ مَغْشَوْنِي وَلِأُتِمَّ نِعْمَةِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا لَكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ فَأَمْرَ بِخَشْيَةِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى وَقَالَ فِي صِفَةِ الْمُسَلِّينَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ أي خائفون هؤلاء خواص الخلق يخافون الله عز وجل وقال عن الملائكة يخافون ربهم من فوقهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون So let's just uh, stop there for a second. So then the Shaykh he says and also he quotes uh, an ayah from the Quran he says uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, فَلَا تَغْشَوْهُمْ وَغْشَوْنِي وَلِئُتِمْ مَنِئْمَةِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا لَكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ And uh, meaning, the rough meaning of, you know, don't fear them but fear me in order that I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, completes his blessings upon you um, and hopes that you are um, guided and that you're guided by doing that, by fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, um, then you're on the straight path. And on the guided path, yeah. So the Sheikh says that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He He commands us with um, uh, 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 fear of Him, fearing Him, Subhanahu wa Taala, 
and they also mentioned in the description of the of of of, of, of the worshippers, the the ones who pray, the musallin, is uh, which uh, which we read, which is from Surah Al Ma'arij. So if you go to the meaning, the translated meaning of of from Surah Al Ma'arij of the ayah, verse twenty seven, and those who fear the torment of their Lord, yeah. So and those who fear the torment of their Lord, i.e., in a state of fear, they they, they fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And these are from the uh, uh, specific uh, or or those, uh, sp- let's say, special type of the word, but uh, specific from those who are a certain group from the group of the creation, as in the Musallin, the ones who pray, the ones who establish the prayer, and they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the uh, Shaykh also mentions that uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about or on uh, or regarding the angels. That they fear their Lord from above, uh, who's above them, and they do what they commanded. Surah An Nahl, verse fifty. That they do what they commanded. Yeah, and they carry out what what they've been commanded with. And these are from the specific, or uh, you know, uh, from the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And also, the Sheikh says, "Wal Rusul, wal Awliya, wa Salihin, yakunun ala ghayati adhimatin." Excuse me, min khashyatillahi azza wa jal wal khawf minhu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa rahmatu minhu fa rahba wal khawf wal khashya kulluha bi ma'na wahid wa in kana ba'duha akhas min ba'd illa annaha yajma'u al khawf min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa hadi min sifat al anbiya wa ibadillah al salihin wa hiya anwa'u adhima wa hiya anwa'u aw anwa'u adhima min anwa'u ibada wa hiya anwa'u adhima من أنواع الإبادة وهي من أعمال القلوب التي لا يعلمها إلا الله سبحانه وتعالى. So then the Sheikh he says, and so he mentions these uh, what we've already mentioned here with regards to the Malaika, you know, the prophets, uh, the Musallin, uh, you know, the ones who establish the prayer, the Salihin, the righteous, the messengers, and the prophets. Then he says that this is upon uh, an, uh, a magnificent. Uh, uh, we say purpose in regards to uh, of, uh, being in a state where we, in terms of a state of fear, fearing Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, having fear for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and hoping in that desire for His reward as well, and, and um, also warahba uh, that having that uh, fear generally, and all of these words, uh, al khashya, warahba, uh, and khawf, they they carry the same meaning. So the Sheikh says they carry the same meaning of fear, and even though we know that some one each of those words carry a slight more slightly more specific meaning of fear than the other, but they do carry the meaning of, of fear. And so it's having a fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and he says that these are the characteristics of the prophets and the slaves of Allah, the righteous slaves of Allah, and it is from the greatest types of ibadah, greatest types of worship. And and just as we mentioned last week as well, that it is it is from the actions of the heart. So these are from the actions of the heart. Yeah. So when you have that fear, you have that hope and desire, as Brother Wasi mentioned, uh, the correct me jazakallah khair with regard to having that desire and hope too uh, in the reward and all these are with regards to the actions of the heart what the heart does yeah so then the shaykh continues and he says al inabatu al ruju wa hiya bi ma'na at tawba wa tawbatu wal inabatu bi ma'na wahid walakin ba'd al ulama yaqulu al inab yaqulu al inabatu akhass min at tawba ay akid li annaha توبة لأنها توبة مع إقبال إلى الله عز وجل أي توبة أي توبة خاصة والإنسان قد يتوب قد يتوب ويترك الذنب ولا يعود إليه ويندم عليه ولكن قد يكون في الإقبال إلى الله إقبال ضعيف أما الإنابة فهي إقبال فهي إقبال على الله عز وجل ولهذا قال وأنيبوا إلى ربكم أسلموا له أي ارجعوا له وأقبلوا عليه سبحانه وتعالى من قبل أن يأتيكم الأذاب ثم لا تنصرون إذا جاء الأذاب المهلك 
الماهق فإنها لا تقبل توبة من من تابع عند ذلك. So we just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh he mentions, he says al inaba. So move on to another word now. Al inaba tu, and he says al inaba tu. It means, it means uh, repentance. And he says that the word al inaba and a tawbah, as we know, is repentance. They carry the same meaning. It means the same thing. But so he says, some of the ulama, some of the scholars, they say. They said that um, al inaba is more specific than a tawbah, and why? Because they said that tawbah, then because you have inaba, which is which is, it carries the meaning of tawbah, repentance, but at the same time it carries the meaning of ge getting closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Why? Because the Sheikh gives the example. He says, for example, if somebody makes tawbah and he repents, you know from his sin and he leaves it but he may not you know return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he may be in that situation but with inaba in this situation the person will um, uh, uh, seek repentance ask Allah for forgiveness and at the same time they will drop what they did and seek forgiveness for the sin that they did uh, and uh, perpetrated and then they will turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they'll get closer to him by increasing in doing good deeds. And so that is inaba, the Sheikh says. And it carries a uh, more specific meaning than just simply repenting only. Right? And re uh, repenting only and, you know, uh, feeling uh, remorse. Yendam, feeling remorse for what you've done. So inaba carries the meaning of repentance, but at the same time it carries the meaning of Going uh, return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obviously doing good deeds. So then the Shaykh, he, uh, Shaykh um, quotes the ayah and he says, wa anibu ila rabbikum wa aslimu lahu. So uh, if we just get the reference for that, that's from Surah Al Zumar, as you can see at the top of the page. So if we go to the Quran translation and have a look at the meaning. It is, and turn in repentance and in obedience with true faith, Islamic monotheism, to your Lord and submit to Him in Islam before the torment comes upon you, then you will not be helped. So then the Shaykh, he mentions here as well, just, just the last part of the translation that we read, he mentions here. He says, مِن قَبْلِ أَن يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْأَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ You know, do that, ask for repentance, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get closer to Him. Be obedient to him before before uh, punishment comes to you, and then you won't be helped after that. So then the Sheikh says, "Ida ja al azab al muhlak al mahiq, fa inha la tuqbal tawba tu man taba inda inda zalik illa qoma yunus alma amanu kashafna anhum azab al khizi. Hada mustathna wa illa fa inna u ida nazal al azab al muhlak fa inha la tuqbal la tuqbal tawba." وَلِهَذَا قَالْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْأَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ So the Shaykh mentions a, a, a nice benefit here for us. He says, so he quotes the ayah and he says, so he says, if uh, the punishment, if a, destruct, if a destructive punishment comes and falls upon, upon you, then, you know, at that, in that situation, no repentance will be accepted. Whoever repents, they won't be accepted. And then um, he says, then he quotes an ayah, the Sheikh quotes an ayah from Surah Yunus. So we pay attention here. Let's go to Surah Yunus. Let's read the whole ayah. Was there any town that believed after seeing the punishment and its faith at that moment saved it from the punishment? The answer is none. Except the people of Yunus, when they believed, we removed them from the torment of disgrace in the life of the present world and permitted them to enjoy for a while. So the Sheikh says that generally when the when the punishment comes down, then there's no repentance after that. The only exception here is the story of Yunus alayhi salam, as mentioned here. And we read the translation of the meaning of the ayah that, that the Sheikh mentioned to us, verse 98 from Surah to Yunus. Yeah? So the Sheikh says this is an exception. Uh, and then he goes on to say that when 
uh, and otherwise then um, in the generality of it when the punishment descends a destructive punishment descends then uh, repentance is not accepted uh, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at the end of the ayah he said min qabli an yatiyakum ladhabu thumma la tunsarun so you know repent and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before uh, punishment descends or comes upon you and then you won't be helped because after that there's no help and the punishment comes and destroys everything in uh, 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 wherever it falls it destroys uh, whoever's around there and including the people and, and from the creation so the shaykh makes that point and then he continues so he says فَتَوْبَةُ وَالْإِنَابَةُ لَهُمَا أَجَلْ وَلَهُمَا حَدْ فَلَا تُقْبَلْ تَوْبَةٌ مَنْ غَرْغَرَ أو من حضره الموت ولا تقبل توبة من نزل به الأذاب الماهق المهلك ولا تقبل التوبة إذا خرجت الشمس من مغربها قبل قيام الساعة لا تقبل التوبة, التوبة حينئذ فالله يحث العبد فالله يحث العبد على توبة والإنابة قبل انتهاء أجله من قبل أن يأتيكم الأذاب ثم لا تنصرون So then the Shaykh says, he says that uh, repentance and uh, returning to Allah in repentance uh, or rep- re- um, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and re- returning to obedience uh, they both have a time and they both have a time period and they both have a specific uh, they have a, they have a uh, a time period and the specific and the shaykh says so uh, repentance is not accepted for the one who um, uh, uh, who reaches death where he chokes you know when you have that um, where you choke or gurgle before you die when people they do that that's the action of every person who dies then when you get to that point of that gargling that occurs right at the point of death um, then that person's uh, repentance is not accepted or a person who obviously dies then after that once they die that is it their repentance is not accepted after that and also as we mentioned earlier the sheikh mentioned earlier that the repentance of the one that uh, punishment descends upon him is not accepted either that the punishment that destroys everything there that's it once that occurs then uh, Repentance is not accepted. Also, when the sun, which is from the signs of the dawah, when the sun um, uh, comes out from, or uh, comes out from the uh, west, arises from the west instead of the east, that's another uh, um, situation where um, repentance is not accepted in that situation. So then the Sheikh says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is encourages us, is encouraging us. Um, to uh, seek, is uh, encouraging his slave, you know, uh, on seeking repentance and returning to obedience before the, before the, any of these situations can occur or where he's cut off from seeking repentance. So while the door of repentance is open, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging his slave to do exactly that, to repent and to return to him in obedience. And then the Sheikh mentions the ayah again. Min qabli an yatiyakum al-adhabu thumma la tunsarun. That the uh, before uh, before punishment comes to you, and then you won't be helped when it comes there. You know when it comes up and it's destroyed everything, that you won't be helped. So the Sheikh says the point. He says the Shahid qawluhu wa anibu ila rabbikum dalla ala an al-inaba nu min anwa al-ibada li anha li anhu qala ila rabbikum. Fada yidulu ala anha nu min anwa al-ibada. So then the Sheikh he says. So he says the point being here is his speech, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech, wa anibu ila rabbikum. And you know, return to your Lord in obedience. And he says that this demonstrates to us that al inaba, this word al inaba, is a type from the types of worship because uh, in the ayah, in the same ayah, he, mentioned, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ila rabbikum. So return in, in uh, repentance and obedience to your Lord. And so this demonstrates to us that it's from the types of worship. So then, the Shaykh continues. It mentions here, 
Right, okay, let's continue. This is part of what we're going to discuss now, inshallah. So we'll come back to that when the Sheikh mentions it, inshallah. So then we move on to another type of worship, and we'll we'll finish here uh, once we read this page, inshallah, page and a half. I think the Sheikh he says al istiana, and that is seeking aid, seeking assistance and aid. Yeah. So the Sheikh says, what does that mean? Al istiana. He says it is seeking help or aid. And he says it's upon two types. So there's two types. And I think uh, we should pay attention uh, to this last part of the lesson because it's quite important. It's very important. So the Sheikh he says, al al istiyanatu bi shay'in la yaqdiru alayhi illa Allah. Fa hadhihi sarfuha li ghayri Allah shirkun. Min man istiyan bi ghayri Allah fi shay'in la yaqdiru alayhi illa Allah fa innahu qad ashrak. Li annahu so we know seeking aid is of two types and so the sheikh says the first type is seeking aid right uh, with something it could be anything seeking aid from something that is not capable of uh, dealing with our situation or being able to help you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the examples will come and the Sheikh says, this is, why? Because he says, this is taking away that which is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, you know, attributing it to somebody else. So you're turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are um, asking aid from something else that is not capable of doing that except Allah. So then this falls into shirk. And I think we mentioned this last week. The Sheikh mentioned it last week in, the, uh, in, 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 in last week's lesson. So then the Sheikh says, whoever seeks aid with, uh, in other than Allah in a thing that, that, in a thing that which he's not capable of doing, and in a thing that only Allah is capable of doing, for indeed then he has uh, committed shirk or fallen into the greater type of shirk. Yeah, which, which we know that the, uh, the greater type of shirk, it takes you out of the fold of Islam and all your Actions, good deeds are erased. So then the Sheikh says, because this is, uh, um, it's uh, basically um, sharing, you know, in your worship, you're sharing in your worship with other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you are moving some of that which is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is worship is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are basically, you know, uh, asking somebody else that has no right to be worshipped, yeah, in this situation. So then the Sheikh, he mentions, he says, Anno'uthani, the second type of seeking aid. He says, Anno'uthani, al-istiyanatu fima yakbiru alayhi al-makhluq, fa'anta tasta'een, fa'anta tasta'eenu bi-ahdin an yab uh, an yabniya ma'aka al-jidar, aw an yahmila ma'aka mutaaq, aw an yu'inak ala matloob mubah. Kama qala ta'ala, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ فَالْإِسْتِيَانَةُ فِي الْأُمُورِ الْعَادِيَةِ الَّتِي يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهَا النَّاسِ هَذَا النَّوْ لَا بَأْسَ فِيهِ لِأَنَّهُ مِنَ التَّعَاوُنِ عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَقْوَى وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم والله في عون العبد ما دام العبد في عون أخيه so then the second type the Sheikh mentions and he clarifies, he says the second type of seeking aid on assistance or help, it is in it is from uh from a creation, from from inside it could be a person, your friend, or whoever he's seeking help from that friend or whoever it is, in that which he is capable of doing. In that which he's capable of doing. For example, the Sheikh says, for example, you are uh you're seeking aid of uh, somebody or seeking help from somebody in order to build uh, a wall, so he helps you build a wall, and the likes of this, he's capable of doing that, and so you know, it's a it's a request that's permissible. He's able to build a wall. He can pick the bricks up. He can lay the bricks. You know, he can spread the cement and mix the cement and etc. Like this. So then the Sheikh mentions an ayah from Surah Al-Maidah, verse two. So let's go there and read that part of the ayah. So then the Sheikh mentions this ayah and he says, Help you one another in albir and at taqwa, virtue and righteousness and piety, but do not help one another in sin and transgression. 
and fear Allah, but Allah is severe in punishment. So there we have the evidence that the Shaykh has mentioned, Hafidullah. So then the Shaykh says, seeking aid in affairs, uh, in ordinary affairs, which you know a person from the people is capable of carrying out. There's no harm in this. You know, there's no harm in doing this, you know. And he mentions, he says, uh, he says, because it's from, you know, aiding, aiding one another and assisting one another and aiding one another in that which is good. And, you know, and fearing Allah as well at the same time. And the Shaykh uh, mentions a hadith uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is, if we look at the reference here, Akhrajul Muslim, uh, and that's um, a hadith number uh, 2699 so um, if you have a look at that from the hadith of, uh, of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu then uh, the Prophet said Wallahu fi awni al-abdi ma dam al-abdu fi awni akhi so Allah is in the aid and assistance of aids and assists his servant as long as his servant is um, uh, aiding and assisting his brother so you know you're helping your brothers do something you're capable of doing and you're helping and making things easy for them, you're assisting them and you know you're helping each other, then you know, then Allah will help you, Allah is in your aid. You're helping your brothers, Allah will help you. You know, so so that's just important to uh, distinguish from the two different types. One is where somebody is asking, just to summarize, one is where somebody is asking uh, somebody else for assistance and it's not possible for them to carry that out and, and they're sharing worship then right uh, uh, they're sharing their worship with other than Allah and this falls into shirk but then the second type which is where somebody is capable of doing something in that example of helping you build a wall you know uh, and other examples like that they're capable of doing these things so there's no harm in that this is from those affairs that the Sheikh mentioned that that are normal you know so then the Sheikh says Amal istiyanatu bil fi shayin la Allah مَثَلُهُ جَلَبَ الرِّزْقُ وَدَفَ الضَّرَرْ فَهَذَا لَا يَكُونَ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ كَالْإِسْتِعَانَةُ بِالْأَمْوَاتِ وَالْإِسْتِعَانَةُ بِالْجِنِّ وَالشَّيَاطِينِ وَالْإِسْتِعَانَةُ بِالْغَائِبِينَ وَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَكَ تَهْتَفْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ هَذَا شِرْكٌ أَكْبَرُ لِأَنَّكَ تَسْتَعِينُ بِمَنْ لَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَى يَانَتِكَ So then the Sheikh says he says it gives some more example says so with regards to um uh, seeking aid from one of the creation it may be a person in a thing that he's not capable of carrying out except only Allah is able to carry that out and to execute that for example the sheikh says like requesting uh, sustenance um, request, uh, you know asking for that uh, an evil be repelled or harm be repelled so for the likes of these then only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of doing this nobody else can remove a harm away from you that, that you, you don't know when it's going to come you know where you ask for protection you ask Allah for protection you ask Allah for risk nobody else can give you risk Allah is the one who sus uh, sustains uh, all of his creatures and his creation. So, for example, like how people do, they seek aid in the uh, dead. They seek aid from uh, uh, the jinn and the shayateen. Uh, they seek aid from those who are not present. So, somebody's not present. It could be dead, could be not there, and they're asking help from that person. All of this, obviously, the person doesn't hear you. The dead don't hear you. Uh, and so... The, and then the person's dead, for example, or is not even present, and the uh, people raising their hands, shouting aloud, you know, raising, uh, calling their names in a loud voice, seeking help. All the Sheikh says, all this is from uh, the greater form of shirk, which takes you out of the fold of Islam and erases all your deeds, because you are seeking aid uh, uh, with somebody who is not capable of helping you in that particular thing so if you're asking somebody from the creation for sustenance if you're asking a dead person uh, to uh, repel an evil all of these kinds of things and many more examples obviously there are many examples uh, they will fall into greater shirk so then the sheikh mentions so there's just there's just some um, grammar here i won't go through it but we mentioned this last week regarding it where we say in surah al-fatiha uh, every in every prayer that in you we worship and in you we seek aid so that because uh, um, uh, the you is mentioned as in meaning Allah is mentioned first you we worship and you we seek aid rather than saying we worship you and we seek aid from you because you comes first in you we worship and in you we seek aid then this uh, 
basically means that is specific to Allah only. Yeah? Specific to Allah only in that which is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you only seek aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those things that only Allah is capable of. Right? And then the Sheikh mentions just towards the bottom and he says that there's obviously no harm in asking for help and assistance in that which he mentioned earlier on in the other page that in that person is able, able and capable of helping you in the example of uh, building a wall, you know, and other examples that somebody is capable of doing um, and they're there. So they're present and they're capable and they can do it. Those conditions, yeah. So then uh, the Shaykh concludes there uh, for that, uh, for Alistiana regarding uh, seeking aid and help and inshallah we will stop there as well and uh, we'll continue next next week inshallah and we'll see you brothers next week with the ta'ala subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh